Welcome to the Masters in Science and Computational Design Practices Open House. I'm Laura Kurgan. I'm the director of the program. We are currently accepting our third cohort of students. Um, we call ourselves the youngest program at GSAP. Um, and it's very exciting <clears throat> for me to have <clears throat> to have developed and started this new program. Um, and the first two cohorts of students have um, have been exceptional. Um, and I'm going to show you some of their work. And as you go through the admissions process, um, I hope you'll talk to some of the current students. So this is Avery Hall. And I know you're all in different parts of the world right now as you um, as you watch this open house. But this is the building um, that you will spend a lot of your time in as you are a student here. So as I said, we've really developed this program um, from, from the ground up. And we call it um, a technical, critical, and creative program that offers students not only the chance to master an array of computational approaches to the built environment, but also a pathway to transform these approaches and the world that we live in. Um, we all have the understanding that computation has done a lot of good and a lot of harm in the world. And we are very aware of this as we approach what we do. So in terms of pedagogy, it's a very new kind of approach um, to the built environment. We take a very multi-dimensional and spatial approach to computational design. Um, and we, we think of ourselves as a very action-oriented pedagogy for emerging designers and thinkers. So um, the tools, data, and technology that we deploy are never neutral in the design process. And we're very aware of that as we teach you a lot of different methods. And so our curriculum really encourages a critical and creative engagement with computational design as both a method and as a practice. You, we also foster um, a studio environment with students and you work alongside other um, students at GSAP. So if you come from a different discipline, you'll learn as you go through this um, open house what a studio environment is. Um, so although computation is addressed in other programs at the school and at the university, our program is the very first one that connects computational methods to spatial design, analysis, visualization, fabrication, and research through a project-based uh, pedagogy directed at architecture and the built environment um, across a range of scales. And that's really important. And you can see um, that in the images that are over here, which are all images that have been made by students in the program. So the most important thing for us is that we are a pre-professional and a post-professional program. So the CDP students are a mix of designers and architects interested in computation, as well as technologists interested in design and the built environment. And it's that mix of students that creates a very dynamic um, cohort. We like to use this um, two by two grid to explain um, what it is that we're trying to do. And, um, you know, if you come from a background in the humanities um, or maybe even, you know, an undergraduate urban studies program or an anthropology program, you come with a lot of conceptual critique and know how to uh, comment and analyze and take a critical approach to things. If you come from a computer science background, you might have, you know, this approach that technology is for technology's sake and have an, um, you know, a bias towards solving the problems in the world only through technology. We try to push everybody into the top right hand corner in our program um, and to encourage critical computation, an action oriented approach to what you're doing with comp computation and a creative entrepreneurialism. So we think of the program as both a computational curriculum for students to develop a technical foundation 
as well as, and most importantly, a project-based learning curriculum designed for students to develop a critical approach to computation in the context of the built environment, focusing on specific tech sets of technologies, tools, and concepts. So just for um, a quick curriculum overview, um, you can see that we have um, a colloquium, a series of colloquium studios, a series of foundational classes, and a series of elective classes. And I'm going to explain what all of those mean. So the first thing, the first way you encounter our curriculum <clears throat> is through an, <clears throat> an online pre-program. Um, and it's a fully, fully, fully online con foundation courses that we recommend which segments of it you should um, engage with based on your background and experience. So the courses um, involve a series of tutori tutorials and many resources that accompany them that are also um, GSAP's contribution to schools and computational design worldwide. So it's completely open source. Uh, you can already see it right now. It's called the Smorgasbord if you look for it online. So these facilitate a, ba a basic data literacy and, pro and learning programming languages specifically geared towards spatial concepts and offered in a coherent manner with project-based examples for spatial analysis and design. The set of tutorials is specifically written with our own pedagogical approach. All the tutorials are written by the teachers um, who will also be engaged you know, in, uh, in the seminars and courses that you will take. So they're written by the teachers that you will take courses with. So it's called the Summer Smorgasbord. If you are accepted into the program and you enroll in April, you have um, well, you have immediate access to it now, but you will be expected to take these tutorials before you come to New York in July. So this is kind of what it looks like. Everything is hosted on a GitHub um, site. And there's a range of tutorials that span the range of things that you'll also go into in more depth as you come to the school. Okay, so the smorgasbord is divided into these five um, segments, which are really three courses. The first is computational drawing. So if you've never done a three-dimensional drawing or, you know, any kind of drawing at all in your life, <laughs> um, that part is essential for you to take. And there's a series of tutorials in Rhino, um, which is a three-dimensional computational drawing program. Um, the second car, uh, part is called Programming for Design Practices, which is designed, divided into three sections. One is Grasshopper, which is a visual coding language associated with um, Rhino. Um, the second introduces you to Python, uh, so data as spatial code. And the third is, is web development. And those are three things that a lot of students um, then go further into depth um, when they choose their elective classes. And then the third class is mapping and data. And actually Adam Vosberg is the one who is um, developing those tutorials. And he teaches a class called Methods in Spatial Research in the spring semester. So um, the second thing that is the core of our curriculum is the colloquium. And we call them colloquium studios and they're each, you know, four hours um, a week in the summer intensive, it's actually eight hours a week. Um, during the summer, the first one is called um, Methods as Practices and Practices as Methods. We really focus there on, you know, what is the definition of computation for the built environment? What are its methods, practices, politics? That course this past summer was taught by Violet Whitney and William Martin who were a very dynamic um, duo who took the students through this range of concerns. 
The second um, colloquium um, I teach along with Snow Area Zhang, it's called Explore, Explain, Propose. Um, over there, we focus on a lot of um, one half of the class on critical readings and invite and introduce students to the, the concepts um, and politics of how to approach making a proposal. And by the end of the semester, you propose the project that you will do um, in the spring semester, which is called Design in Action, which is taught by Seth Thompson. And it is also, um, you, you also work with an advisor who you meet with every, once every two weeks. So you have an instructor who you talk to once, you know, once a week about your project as it's moving along and to an advisor once every two weeks. In the fall semester, um, Snowary and I do a range, as I said, of dis reading discussions and labs during the four hour session of the um, of the class and then a desk writ once a week to talk about how your proposal is moving along. So then um, following that, there are a series of foundational courses. So I've already described the pre-program. Then there are four courses that are required by all computational design practices students. The one is computational modeling, <laughs> which is really um, about procedural design and urban computation. Um, the second is computational design workflows, which focuses on web design um, and a little bit of um, sensor, sensor, um, sensor design. And the third is mapping systems, where we focus on analyzing data sets and we use Jupyter Notebooks to address that. Um, and then the third class is called design intelligence, where we focus a little bit on um, artificial intelligence and optimization um, in the design process. Okay, so here's a sort of a more, a, a little bit of the expanded layout of what those classes are. And then following that, we have a series of elective classes, which are really um, all over the map, um, depending on what you're interested in. So of course, there are 100 plus electives across GSAP, and there are 18 specific computation electives, um, which we curate as a series of classes that are geared towards the computational design practices program. We're constantly going to be updating those, um, you know, to reflect the most current and most up-to-date technologies and practices that you will likely want to be engaged in. This is the current range of things, you know, from design intelligence, which as you know, is one of the required classes, data visualization, we focus on building information management. We have, um, you know, UX design has become spatial UX, all kinds of classes over here. And you can ask me questions about any of those. We are introducing this, this year, physical computation, um, there's also AR and VR and, you know, also use of specific data, kinds of data in design. And then you're also, um, depending on your background, for example, if you come in with a lot of computation, you might want to focus more on history and theory. You might want to focus on building technology. There's, you might want to focus on urban analytics classes that are in the, offered by the urban planning program or even real estate classes. There are also classes that you can take outside um, of GSAP, you know, perhaps in the business school or in the computer science school, things like that. Okay, so here's what a typical curriculum looks like. So everybody has to do some part of the online curriculum. Um, and then in the summer, there's no options at all. You have to take these four classes. And then in the fall, you take 
you know, each semester you take the colloquium in relation to a lot of elective classes. Um, you also have the option of being a part-time student. Um, most part-time students take the two-year option where they do some part of the, um, the summer curriculum. And then they often do all the seminar classes in the first year. And in the second year, they take the colloquium classes. There's a three-year option, which we have not um, we've not diagrammed over here. Um, but as I say, most part-time students have taken the two-year option so far. So here's the range of faculty. And you can see that the full-time faculty are myself um, and Adam is the assistant director. Um, David Benjamin is also very involved with the program. He does a lot of work on embodied energy and climate and technology. Lola Ben-Alon, who runs the Natural Materials Lab and is the director of the technology sequence. Leah Meisterlin is a GIS methodologist and um, very involved in the Urban Analytics Program. And Anthony Vanke, um, who also teaches a class on advanced analytics and also um, sensors, design of sensors. Then our adjunct faculty, um, I encourage you to look all of them up as I, I think, you know, Violet Whitney worked at um, Google Dell for a long time. She's now starting her own practice. Luke Wilson um, has also um, been involved with the program and setting it up, runs a research unit at KPF. Um, Dan Taeyang does very experimental work. Um, thinking about um, space beyond the screen and space as computation as such. Um, Celeste Lane uh, does a lot of work in computation and web design. Carlo Bailey uh, does a lot of work around prop tech um, and is more of a data scientist. Jia Zhang is an amazing um, data visualization person and Snowaria who teaches with me is also um, at Google Delve and also very um, much involved in procedural design and also has an incredible autistic practice. Um, yeah, so look all of these people up. Um, CDP has also had a really great event series. We started out um, the, you know, the first year with A.L. Weitzman of Forensic Architecture. Um, this year we had three people, Kari Hackett, as, as you can see, uh, Siki Zhu, um, who was very involved with Sidewalk Labs. And um, Lai Yi gave a really amazing talk about the how to measure how to measure the internet. Um, last year we had Farzan Laftijam who did um, a really interesting talk on real time urbanism. Uh, Sam Levine taught us a lot of things about web scraping and the limits of um, you know all kinds of technologies and experimental practices. Um, and we will continue to have this kind of events, um, and sp sp especially in the summer when you first arrive. So here it is again, the summer semester, um, just to reinforce, it's very intensive the summer and it's designed to be intensive so that you really, um, you know, dig deep into methods and what they mean for specific practices. Um, the colloquium is six credits, and then you do these nine credits of the seminars. Students have come from all over the world. Um, they also come from a lot of different backgrounds, you know, really from GIS to exhibition design to computer science to data science to graphic design. You know, it's really a, a really great combination of expertise of students. So here is some of the work um, that was produced this summer.
So these, this is the work that came out of both the, um, the seminars and out of the colloquium. It's a little bit of sound over here, which is great. And Matthew Heaton, um, who has a very strong background in GIS, is now focusing on sound in his work. Um, Dan Miller is focusing on, on experimenting with mapping as a practice as such and doing a lot of work with AI. Um, Elizabeth, who had a background in computer science, was experimenting with sort of autobiography and sketching at the same time. So as you can see, you know, the methods during the summer were, um, you know, were just that. They, they, were, they were methods, um, not really focusing on a specific project proposal. This was the final review in the summer. Um, here are the faculty, that's Noaria Zhang, Anthony Vanke, Dan Taeyang, and Celeste Lean. So then in the fall semester, um, you are responsible for the colloquium, six credit class and design intelligence, and then two or three elective classes. Um, here is also some of the work that came out of this class last year. So George Vergesi was doing, um, he was almost doing a, a interior uh, GPS project but using blockchain so that people's privacy uh, was protected. Um, this was work by Lucia Rebellino, um, who was working on the 5G network and the fact that the, um, the frequency interfered with a weather satellite and she was um, trying to, you know, try and understand why and how this happened. Um, this is Shang Shi, who did who he made he spent a lot of time making a data set which doesn't didn't exist about the kinds of investments that people who can buy um, a green card um, by doing development projects in the U.S. So this is Violet's class, um, which is spatial UX, really trying to think beyond the screen. Um, she has a whole periodic table that she's devised about the kinds of sensors um, that are already in our environment and the ways in which we can use them creatively and critically to understand um, all of these things. And um, this is a little bit of the work from Jia Zhang's data visualization class. And then in the spring semester, you do design in action, which is the six credit class. And again, they are about three or four elective seminars that you take that are um, that that we really help you to choose to have a relationship with the kind of uh, capstone of thesis that you're working on. Students are also um, allowed to request money to travel, um, which has a specific relation to the work that they're doing in their capstone and thesis as well. Some people choose to go to conferences like SXXW in, uh, in Austin. Um, some people went and did field work um, and, you know, and some people went off to research um, locations to look at some specific technologies. So here are some examples of the capstone work. Um, this is Sarah Lee Satagaroon, um, and her advisor was Seth Thompson and Dan Taeyang. And she was doing, she designed a clock, which um, really took into account very different kinds of time cycles um, to do with habits, to do with you know, her gender, to do with you know, all kinds of things. It was really super interesting work. Um, this is Jinling uh, Zhang. Um, actually, this is for a seminar class that he did, the environments, animals, and technologies, where he combined um, sensors um, and a little bit of um, artificial intelligence. Um, 
this is work from Adam's methods in spatial research class, you know, different kinds of uh, GIS methodologies. And here are a lot of the capstone projects. All of the work in our program, we really encourage people to put to, we, well, actually we require that everybody does a website by the end of their capstone. It doesn't mean that all the work they do is on a specific website on, you know, on the actual website, it can link to broader projects that you do or to models that you build or, you know, incorporate video in, in what you're doing. Um, here are some of the examples. So this one, yeah. Again, this is Sarah Lee's project. I already talked about it. Um, this project was done by um, Eddie Joe, and he focused on the LinkedIn terminals all over New York City and tried to think about the different ways that public Wi-Fi can be used in the city. You know, it's it's an existing resource that is there and it's very underutilized. And he had a lot of different ideas for how that could happen. Um, This is again Lucia's project. And you can see she really was thinking about different points of view and the way that you can understand um, this technology at very different scales from looking down, from looking up at the sky, um, from looking at the perception from the weather set satellite and beyond. And this is Zoe Lin, who um, did a very different kind of project. It was about food networks um, in Chinatown in New York City, the one that's in downtown New York, and was looking at the transformations over time um, on the way in which both gentrification and COVID had an effect on this very unique food network. Um, so she did a lot of work um, scraping uh, Google Street View on the one hand, but also did a lot of field work and interviews and her project was very much a spatial data narrative. And so, you know, that's that's a very quick scan through all the, the to, through some of the thesis projects. Um, I'm happy to say the students have been um, getting amazing jobs as they have graduated. Um, I, I don't wanna sort of name all of those things, but I'm leaving it on the screen a little bit so you can see where they are. And just to reinforce once again, that our program is really, you know, computation, the built environment design and whatever you choose um, that you want it to be. So. Some people think of it as activism, algorithms and social justice, creative technology, data visualization, design justice, this whole list of things over here. And what is unique about our program and the fact that we have a small cohort at the moment is that we focus on unique advising and individual advising for each student. And we really work with you um, based on the experience that you bring into the program. And we direct you towards the things that will help you um, do what you want to do when you graduate. 